With having our background now with Pythagorean theorem, we're going to look at a couple of special cases when it comes to right triangles. The first of these is what's called a 45-45-90 triangle, and it gives us theorem 8-5. Now this theorem states, in a 45-45-90 triangle, meaning 45 degree, 45 degree, and 90 degrees, both legs are congruent, and the length of the hypotenuse is the square root of 2 times the length of a leg. And the way we get this is that a 45-45-90 triangle can be formed by taking the diagonal of a square. So if I have a square with 90 degree angles and all four sides congruent, and then I take and draw a diagonal across this, The resulting triangle will have a 90 degree angle and two 45 degree angles because we bisected those corners. Now, if we were to pick any side length, just for the sake of argument, let's pick a side length of 3. My two sides would both have 3. And then to find C, the hypotenuse, I would take 3 squared plus 3 squared equals C squared. Well, 3 squared is 9, plus 9 equals c squared. This is 2 times 9 equals c squared. And then I will take the square root of that. And I cannot take the square root of 2, but I can take square root of 9. So c ends up being 3 times the square root of 2 using our properties of square roots. So I end up with... Three time, or square root of 2 times the length of the leg, just like our theorem tells us. So if we have this background, or if we have this information and they always follow this pattern, we can use it to make quick and easy predictions with only a given amount of information. For instance, if I have a triangle, a 45-45-90 triangle, whose side length is 5, times the square root of 3. How would I find the length of the hypotenuse? Well, according to our information, my hypotenuse, which I'm going to call h, is going to be the length of the leg, 5 square root of 3 times the square root of 2. So, I multiply my real numbers, or my rational numbers, 5 times 1 is 5, then I multiply what's inside of my square roots. Square root of 3 times square root of 2 is the square root of 6. Next, what if I'm told that my hypotenuse is 10 square root of 2? Well, in order to go from this backwards, I would have to divide because h is equal to s times the square root of 2. <clears throat> so s, using substitution for my h's, 10 square root of 2 equals s times the square root of 2. And using division property of equality, I can divide the square root of 2 off of each side and I have 10 is equal to s. Now we can also take this and put it into application in square and diagonal. So a baseball diamond is technically a square and the side length on it is 60 feet. So how far does the third baseman need to throw the ball to get a player out at not home plate, sorry, at first base. So how far is it from third base here across the diagonal to first base if the side lengths are 60? And we're going to round our answer to the nearest foot. So we have basically a 45-45-90 triangle with a side length of 60. Using our pattern the distance from first to third is s 
times the square root of 2. Well, s is 60, so we have 60 times the square root of 2. Now, running this through quick calculations, we come out with approximately 84.85 feet. Rounding to the nearest foot, that is 85 feet. So, the first baseman has to, or the third baseman would have to throw the ball 85 feet in order to get it to first base and get the player out. So, anytime you see a square cut across its diagonal, we have this relationship of S, S, and S square root 2. Now, the 45, 45, 90 is only one of two special triangles that we look at when we're talking about the Pythagorean theorem. So let's take a look at the this theorem 8-6 is in relation to what's called a 30-60-90 triangle. And it states, in a 30-60-90 triangle, the length of the hypotenuse is twice the length of the shorter leg, and the length of the longer leg is the square root of 3 times the length of the shorter leg. And the way we get this one is we're not cutting a square in half, but if we were to start with something like an equilateral triangle, where all three sides are the same length, and drop an altitude, which is also the perpendicular bisector, we would bisect that vertex angle, making it 30 degrees. Originally, all the angles were 60, and we have a right angle. So now, we have a triangle with 60 degrees on one, 30 degrees on the other, and a right angle for the third. Well, this new base is going to be picking any number at random, let's say 6. It was half of the side of the original equilateral triangle. So if it's 6, the other one is 2 times 6, or 12. And then, when we go through and run our Pythagorean theorem, this third side will come out as 6 square root of 3. So our pattern, in the end, is s, 2s, and s root 3. Remember, if you have three different size angles, you come out with a square root of 3 on one of them. If you have two different size angles, then you have a square root of 2 in your simplified forms. So let's take a look at being able to find the others if we know one piece. So if I know that the long side, the long leg of a triangle, 30, 60, 90 triangle, is 8, what would the other ones be? Well, our short side, our long leg is supposed to be S, times the square root of 3, and that is equal to 8. Well, how do I get s by itself? I divide by square root of 3. So s equals 8 divided by square root of 3. I'm not allowed to have square roots in the denominator. That should be a feature that you remember from algebra, square, uh, rules for square roots. So I'm going to multiply it by square root of 3 over the square root of 3, and I get 8 square root of 3 divided by 3. Then, going through and finding my long side, it's just going to be 2 times this, so my hypotenuse is 2s, so that becomes 2 times 8 root 3 over 3, so I get 16 square roots of 3 divided by 3. So here is my hypotenuse, Here's my short side. Here was my long leg. So using these patterns and basic algebraic skills, we'll be able to move back and forth, given one piece, finding the others automatically without always having to do our Pythagorean theorem. So these are going to be used continuously. We'll use them a lot here in geometry. You'll use them in Algebra 2. And if you go into a study of trigonometry, pre-calculus or calculus, they'll be used a lot there. So make sure you have these patterns down and are able to use them.